Welcome to episode 52, the beginning of the postseason, which unfortunately Green Bay is not part of. The Chicago Bears won against the Saints and finished the season 9-7. and seven. So the Packers went wah, 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 home, home, home. Let me tell you something real quick here. The Cowboys, oh, by the way, I'm doing a lot of thing, recording and encoding on the computer here, so uh, it's going to be super laggy. It's a good game because this game doesn't really bother unless you're watching the game. Anyways, uh, the Cowboys. The Cowboys are ridiculous in this in this playthrough. They're just OP because, man, they totally, he won, M, uh, what's his name? Dylan Gunn won. The M All right, guys, it's over. It's sad. Here we go. Here's a rundown of the seating: Cowboys, Saints, Rams, Bears, Cards, and Panthers. One through six. Jets, Ravens, Texans, Raiders, Browns, and Jaguars. One through six. Um, went through my awards on my team, and let me tell you that it was not very long because we were pretty average. Um, Matthew Royster won one week of defense, Defensive Player of the Year. Week? Not year. Week. Jordan Talbert won Offensive Player of the Week. And we had three Pro Bowlers. Brady Cole Prague went to his second Pro Bowl here. And uh, got some EXPs for that. Not too much, but... And then uh, on defense, we have one Defensive Player go to the Pro Bowl. His First Pro Bowl. So there you go. That was nice. And uh, Shocker, our fullback, went to the Pro Bowl. And he got lots of EXPs for that. So our fullback is going to be phenomenal next year. Um, which is good for Jordan. So that is it for that. We look through the practice squad players that have been re signed, and we need to rehire some staff. Uh, it looks like. Everybody is re-signed. So. He gets a, a pass on this year. And, uh, yeah. So, there we go. Old line scouting. I think. Is there a coach's scouting? Um, oh, doesn't allow you to see. Or a defensive back. That's what we need, a defensive back instead of a line. I think defensive backs are harder to get. I'm going to let him go. So we need to hire a defensive back coach. Can we do that here? Or is that was that just... Uh, this coaching thing is so weird. All right, I'll have to get one. Can I go over here and uh, owner staff? That does not look like you can yet. All right, well, we're going to go without a, a someone. Let's uh, advance to next week and see what happens. Here's a look at the scores. Jacksonville beat Houston, Carolina beat LA, uh, Cleveland beat Oakland, and Chicago crushed Arizona. Wow. That's a pretty bad, pretty bad beating that they put on them. Offensive yards, yeah, look at that. Shoof. Yikes, that was a lopsided match. So, let's see what we got. For the division round, Jaguars at Jets, Panthers at Cowboys. Panthers are defending Super Bowl champions. Hi. Uh, yes, and they beat the Browns. Browns are at the Ravens and the Saints and Bears. Bears at the Saints. Saint. All right, here we go. Here's the divisional round matchups scores. We got New York Jets, Dallas easily, uh, Baltimore over Cleveland, and uh, New Orleans over. Chicago, so I'm really happy with this the two except for the Dallas one. I would have rather seen Carolina go so for the chance to go Super Bowl Saints at Cowboys. Let's go Saints 
and Ravens at Jets. Let's go Ravens. Let's have underdogs win. But before we get to do that, it is time for the draft tracker to give our 2022 grades to the remaining players on the team from our draft. And from the 2017 draft, we only have two players remaining. Maybe we're going to start with the first pick overall that we picked in the 2017 draft. It was Brady Kropok, and he is now 10 points higher than what he was when we drafted him. Let's take a look at his year that he had. The catches went up, yards went down, average went way down, touchdowns went up a little bit. You know, it would be nice to see a little higher yards and everything. We gave him an A minus. I'm going to drop him to a B plus, and a lot of that is not because of him. It's because AR is not playing well. So. There we go. He got a B plus. Hopefully, he can catch some fire and yeah, we're staying A minus. I like this guy. And uh, did he run the ball at all? Of course not. It'd be pretty funny if he did. Oh wait, 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 wait. He did break some tackles and fumble the ball twice. Uh, let's look at his general. Yeah, so I turned down the number of plays. So this is this is uh, to be expected that there was a drop in plays. Since he played in everything, he didn't get hurt at all. Next up is our remaining, it was a third round pick on the defense. Calvin Samada, who has been relegated to backup, backup. So he'll just finish out his contract. He had three tackles, three assists, three played 114 snaps. He gets an F. His career with Green Bay is uh, tenuous at best. So now we're going to move to the 2018 draft which has a few players on it, I think, still. Maybe. Has one player left from the 2018 draft. And that is our big man here, Avion Conrad, starting defensive tackle. Fifty-two tackles, four sacks. He just Bumped it up a little bit and see how many. 1,200. So look at that. I mean, he's. That's what you want from a defensive tackle. I mean, I'm going to give him an A minus as well. Okay. It's going quickly, huh? Our first pick in the 2019 draft is Sheldon Payton. And he is still going strong. Um, this is his fourth year, so I would assume that we re-signed him to a five-year deal going forward. So, uh, let's see how he do. He, his tackles went way down. No sacks. Had an interception on 300 and some odd plays. So we must have missed some time. Or, or defensive scheme switched and changed so he wasn't on the field as much. Uh, this is uh, concerning since I resigned him to a deal thinking that he was kind of going up but um, it looks like I'm gonna hold him off as a C for his time here. Alright so our next player that we signed in the second round was Corey Turnbell. He's going to go down a little bit, too, because Aaron Rodgers didn't play as well. Oh, no, he, he actually improved quite quite dramatically. Yeah, look at that. Played twice as many 
All right, let's compare that because he only played half the year last year. Now, see, he went down because that was his year prior, so he's not doing as well either. I'm going to give him a C plus. Our second round that we did not resign. was you don't even see him anymore oh here he is a 4-3 run stopping left end and as you can see just not um, not panning out so he's an F Simon McFarland is another one that we didn't resign. That's our other. He was a third round pick. He didn't get any playing time either. Oops. Sorry. That's going to slow us down a little bit. Yeah. Big old goose egg on three snaps. It means our main people were heavier, healthy. And then uh, the savior of the round, Jeffrey Riviera, our all-star middle linebacker guy here that's doing really well, I hope. Yeah, it's got yeah, a little bit of down year too. The whole team did because they were not 12-4, but he played a ton of snaps. Defense was on the field a lot, apparently. So, um, I gave him an A. I'm going to go B- minus on this year. And our next player that we drafted in the fifth round was Julius Theory. We did not resign him. So, let's take a look here. He was our fourth wide receiver on the team. 15 catches for 153 yards and no touchdowns. Ah, dang it. Just never, oh, that's, oh, that's season stats, career stats. There, there we go. Phew, that's tough for me. 200 and some odd downs. Didn't do punt returning, didn't do kick returning. Really, really just failed in general, and he's no longer on the team. I give him an F. Late round, seventh round quarterback that we chained, ch chose was Jabari Overton. And I can't even see him on the team depth chart because it's so low. Uh, he is, I think I'm going to do it from here from now on. Oh, this is not the roster. Ah, be right back. Yeah, he got in 76 plays and he didn't make any, he didn't have any stats. So he gets an F2. Nordley Anderson, the 2019 seventh round pick, the last one. Who played a little fullback and then was moved back to tight end and got a contract extension because they make a great one-two punch with his run blocking. Um, I gave him C's, as you can see. He just uh, this does run blocking. I mean, he's just he's gonna get a B for his job. Our second round pick in that year's draft was a. I think he's playing right end now. Kevin McCullen. I'm a little worried because. Oh, all right, we'll skip one. But oh, well, let's uh, let's go back a little bit here. We're moving to the 2020 draft. So lots of players missing now. Uh, the 2020 draft. Uh, look at. Our number one pick in the 2020 draft when we drafted 13th was Matthew Royster, who is now our number one cornerback. 
is he a great cornerback? No. Is he a bad quarterback? No. He is above average. I'm giving him a B. Next up is Kevin McCullen, who I had such high hopes for. And uh, he's just not, I don't know, maybe he's just not in the right position. Maybe he should, uh, maybe he should be playing linebacker on a 3-4 or something. Just doesn't, uh, doesn't, doesn't wow me for considering what he had. Oh, and then I see he had nine and a half sacks, which is probably really high on the team. On 990 plays. So, um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I knew he was doing really well. So he had a really up year compared to last year. I gave him A minus. We're now into our, we had three second round picks that year in the 2020 and two of them were quite disappointing. Um, here is our other one. Let's look at his stats. Fumbled the ball twice. Caught one pass. And uh, he did punt returning. Kick returning. Um, I'm giving him a D plus. Because he does do more punting and kicking. But he's not phenomenal at it. You know, he's just... Whatever. The other second round pick we had was a cornerback. He's got slow development, so I'm he's gonna really struggle to get out of his play a little bit more. But he's just not going to develop. He's an F. We have, uh, what, two more picks in the 220, 2020 draft. Two seventh rounders. Another cornerback, Bradley Roberts. Probably didn't get any playing time at all. Oh, you get. I always want to do that for some reason. You've got one snap. Nice job. Bradley, get on the field. All right, you're done, Bradley. And the savior of this draft, our superstar halfback, who was voted second this year behind Ezekiel Elliott. Yards went down a little bit, but the average went up. The touchdowns went down. The game average was a little less because Packers struggled to stay on the field. So, and... We just did less, and uh, receiving-wise, he's still 27 catches and three more touchdowns. Uh, didn't, didn't do any of this stuff. He didn't block. He didn't punt. He didn't return kicks. He played in 811 snaps. Um, like he got hurt a couple times. He, you know, I mean, he's an A. It's got to be an A because he's the second best running back in the league. There we go. Then we got through the 2020 draft. So we have to 21 in the 22 draft, which consists of everybody. So they're still all on the team. There is Emery Merrill entering his third year. Uh, a great find in the first round with a 30th pick. He was drafted as a right end, but notice that he was just too big and bulky for that. Moved him to uh, defensive tackle. His rating shot up because of it. He's uh, powerful. You know, that's what he does. He bull rushes the quarterback. Uh, he will pass Avion Conrad as the best defensive player next year. He gets an A, and maybe I might give him an A plus because he was a Pro Bowler. Eight and a half sacks for a defensive tackle. Played the entire season. I mean, that's, he's an A plus player. So there you go. That's our first A plus I've ever given out. Crazy happens in the off season. B.J. Hemingway will be our starting free safety next year, and I will move Haha -ha Clinton Dix to the strong safety position as he slows down um, the free safety, having more speed and range. You got a C last year for his potential, I'm dropping it to a D plus, and hoping that we get some good effort next year. Uh, we drafted a strong safety as well in the second round. JJ Daly, 
and he has slow development, which means he's going to have a hard time getting anything in. Um, I'm giving him an F, and I don't have confidence he's going to make the team next year. Or, well, he's going to be struggling because, well, you get it. 2021 season, we had to drop the center. Well, we dropped it a center. We didn't have to drop the center. And then uh, Corey Lindsley became too expensive, and I needed some money, so I cut Corey Lindsley and made this guy the starting center. Um, he didn't give up any sacks, and he played probably the entire season. He's pretty solid. Pretty solid. The pass game wasn't as great, but I think that's more on Aaron Rodgers than it is on him. Uh, the running game dipped a little bit, but not too bad. He is going to get himself an A for efforts. Um, while we're at it, in the fifth and sixth round, we took... This is our sixth round, fifth round pick right here, Leroy Lawrence, and he did not, he played one down, so that's that's a job, played one down the entire year. And then his counterpart, Trey Hankins, which probably is the left guard here, he got, let's see what he get, he didn't give up any sacks. But he played 59 plays, so he did a little bit better, but not that much better. So, giving him an F for just not developing yet. Um, I know that's kind of kind of harsh to give players who didn't have a chance an F. I might have to change that to D's. So, let's see, who do we have left? We got a wide receiver that we drafted in the third round. London Moulton, and I'm sure he didn't get much play time. And he's got two receptions for nine yards and a touchdown on 79 plays. So I'm giving him a D. And uh, our fullback, who was drafted as a tight end, went to the Pro Bowl. And uh, it's pretty phenomenal. Look at that. Ran the ball six times for a, a one-yard average. Had a four-yard complete long. Caught the ball out of the backfield occasionally. Played a bunch of plays. I gave him a C. And he's an he's an A fullback. So there we go. And we for our last pick we drafted a cornerback on. On a hope and a whim that it would be somebody good, and he is this guy right here. So I'm gonna say that he has no stats. Nope, didn't even get to play. There you go. That's the 2021 draft season. That's where I'm gonna end the video for this time. That was episode 52. Uh, stay tuned for episode 53 when we finish the last of the draft class, uh, which wasn't very strong. And but I had some winners in it, had some winners in it, so and then go on from there. Thanks for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think.